no bad days, no bad days, no bad days, and finally, no bad days. And that's the motto. <laughs> What's up guys, John Moon with Buy Me A Coffee, and I'm back again with another video, this time about three predictions that I have for the creator economy in 2022. If you are a creator of any capacity, it doesn't matter what, you could be a TikToker, a YouTuber, an artist, podcaster, memer, a guy who puts cartoon sounds to Drake songs, anything, any type of creator. These are three things you should be paying attention to right now. If you are interested in taking your creative work to the next level, monetizing it, making a, more of just a hobby of it, potentially a career. I'm a full-time content creator. I'm paying attention to this stuff and so should you. The first thing you're gonna see are longer brand deals and higher rates. Typically, digital creators right now are making money in three ways. From the platform itself, YouTube paying their creators, TikTok and the Creator Fund, Instagram, Facebook, of course, merchandise and things that people sell directly to their audience. And finally, brand deals. Brands approaching you, wanting you to do a post that sponsors their product. This is becoming more and more popular. Influencers and digital creators are now the go-to method of marketing. Not all brands were on board with this. A lot were very old school, making very commercial-like ads. Nobody wants to watch that shit anymore. Brands are starting to really catch up and realize the best way to get your product in front of eyes is to use influencers. So with that said, it's gonna become very competitive. Now is the time to raise your rates and secure longer deals. No more of this one-off video stuff or month-to-month -month deals. I'm talking an entire year contract between you, the creator, and the brand. It benefits both sides. You as the creator don't have to worry about scrambling for work every month or not know where your money is going to come from in the future. It's terrifying and very stressful. Now on the brand side, they don't want to do that either. They don't want to constantly look for a new influencer every single month. They're starting to realize how important it is to have that sense of authenticity and that personal touch an identity, that face of their brand. So they're gonna wanna nail down a year long deal, maybe even longer. That's awesome. As a creator, do not sell yourself short. Raise your rates, secure that bag. Someone once told me that if the brand doesn't wince or give any pushback about your initial rate, then you're too low. And it's true. So yeah, longer brand deals, higher rates, secure the bag, secure the coffee. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Number two, bear with me, cryptocurrency, NFTs. The reason I'm not putting this as the first point because I'm probably gonna lose a lot of viewers just by mentioning it. I get it. I get it, it's confusing. That shit still goes way over my head. So you're not alone. Crypto has a bad rap. It seems like it's just this rich person's game and just the crypto bros are obnoxious as hell. I thought the same way until I did a little bit of research. I'm not gonna jump into the crypto game right now. I don't have the money for it, but I see a ton of opportunity for creators and especially for creators who have amassed a following. Once you have a following, you can make money off of it. You can sell whatever you want if you have some loyal fans who love what you do, but take it a step further. Thanks to modern technology and cryptocurrency, you're gonna start seeing creators make their own currency, like money, like, like tokens that people can use to buy their merchandise. Kind of like an arcade where you rack up tickets to like claim your prize, which like, Seems like a very unnecessary step. Why wouldn't you buy that stuff? You still did it because it's an arcade and you had a fun time and accumulating those tickets was exciting. You still played the games, got the tickets, traded them in for a fucking Tootsie Roll. You know, you know you did. But with this, you're probably asking, well, this seems like a very unnecessary step. Why wouldn't I just spend normal money to buy this person's merchandise? And to that, I say, look, you don't have to learn anything about crypto or NFTs if you don't want to. I respect that, but there's one thing I do want you to learn from this, and it's that all of this boils down to one very simple idea, and that's exclusivity. Crypto can't be possible without the idea of exclusivity. People want things that are limited, that are exclusive. Autographed baseball cards, two of the same exact cards side by side, one's autographed, one's not. Obviously, this one's worth a ton more. An artist might be selling only a certain number of tickets to a show. People are gonna fight like heck over those tickets. And then when it comes time for the concert, are gonna be running to the door. Why? Because it's exclusive. It's cool to be able to say you only have one of 10 of something in the world. It's even cooler to say that you have one of only one thing in the world. Crypto is that, except 
digital. It's like a digital signature coming from your favorite artist. That's pretty cool. Oh, but why can't I just take like a screenshot or a screen recording of this like digital art? Yeah, that's fine. You can also take a picture of the Mona Lisa. Doesn't mean it's yours. Here's the thing, real life, like reality, like the world right now sucks. So everybody's like moving their life online and living digital lives and doing everything digitally. No one wants to do with the real world right now. So like having a valuable painting on your wall in your house that no one will ever see except you is like the same thing as having a valuable piece of digital art, like an NFT, except in the online world, you can show that stuff off to people, to your followers or your community, which leads me to my third prediction. And this is kind of an all encompassing thing that not only creators are utilizing, but major companies, but building your own personal brand around a community. Guess what? You don't need a million fans anymore. Forget that unrealistic goal of being famous. You don't need that. What you need is a very tight knit, loyal community around you. You're going to start seeing a lot more creators form communities around them. Lee Jen, who was a pioneer of the passion economy, creator economy, wrote an amazing article about the 100 true fan model. This was in contrast to an essay written by Kevin Kelly over a decade ago about the 1000 true fan model. His model was that all you needed was 1000 true fans to spend $100 on you per year and you can make six figures. Lee took it a step further and came up with the idea that all you need is 100 fans to spend $1000 on you every year and you can make the same if not more money. But how are you going to get someone to spend $1000 on you a year? Well, basically you need to shift your focus away from being famous and having this huge fandom and instead focusing on how you can help those fans. Instead of your fans having a desire to support you, they instead have a desire for something else, something like self-improvement, exclusive access, transformation, self-interest. The focus is not so much on you, the creator anymore, but more how can I, the fan, get more out of you? This is where that crypto stuff comes in too. Here's another way to look at it. The 1000 fans model obviously works, but the creator is very disconnected from their audience. There's a lot of fans. They can't possibly keep up with all of them. It's a fandom. The creator doesn't really care about their audience, what you want instead of a fandom is a community, a small tight knit group of people that you interact with, make them feel special, give them exclusive access to stuff, make them invest in your future, have them build with you, especially if you have your own currency where the value of it goes up as you get more successful, that community that uses that currency to buy your stuff now basically owns stock in your success. Everybody's benefiting each other. The creator's benefiting the audience. The audience is benefiting the creator. It's a community. Everybody works together. Everybody's working towards the same thing. It's not so one-sided. Does that make sense? I, I, I think it makes sense. Basically, the smaller the fan base you have, the more time you have to actually focus on them and provide services to them and just grow and have fun together and everybody's getting something out of it. That I just spilled my coffee. That is the future of the creator economy. And now this is cold. Well, I think I've said enough. Those are three predictions that I have for, you know, for next year, although a lot of it's happening now. If you're a creator that wants to take your stuff to the next level, start paying attention to that stuff. And as always, set up a buy me a coffee because that is the easiest way to fund your creative work. Start accepting donations right now. Set up subscriptions. Start giving those loyal fans that you might have exclusive access to stuff. You can do that right with Buy Me A Coffee. Find those particular followers that seem to like all of your stuff, commenting all the time. Reach out to them, make them feel special. Start building your community. That is only gonna help you in the long run. All right, I need more coffee, so cheers.